Uh, don't even get me started on the ends in Final Fantasy One. They not only revived your dead. They not well. They didn't revive your dead characters, did they? But they no. did save your game. Yeah. How convenient. <laughs> you guys are all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to do one more before like I I can't really speak all that much. But um number 32, you can't kill me, I quit. Cipher rule. The good guys never seem to get the hang of actually arresting or killing the bad guys. Minor villains are always permitted to go free so they can rest up and menace you again later, sometimes five minutes later. Knowing this rule, you can deduce that if you do manage to kill or force the surrender of a bad guy, you must be getting near the end of the game. Ain't that the truth? Indeed. <laughs> The, uh, the reverse always seems to be true as well. Every time you seem to die, even in like Pokemon, you're free. You, you're free to go back to your last save point, or you know the place where you get healed and just start over where you last left off. I always find that funny in Pokemon games, where if you lose like Team Rocket or whatever, instead of you know beating you up and taking all your money in Pokemon, they're happy to let you just go back to the Pokemon Center and heal up. And yeah. since you've since you've mentioned Team Rocket, dare I say, Team Rocket's blasting off again. Ding. Twinkle. <laughs> Twinkle. Sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> Number 33. And now you die, Mr. Bond. Also known as the Beatrix rule. Fortunately for you, the previous rule also replies in reverse. Oh, I, apparently I skipped ahead unknowingly. <laughs> <laughs> because rather than killing you when they have you at your mercy, the villains will settle for merely blasting you down to one HP point and leaving you crumpled in a heap while they stroll on laughing. This is, of yeah. course, because they're already planned on how they'll manipulate you into doing the building later in the game. See, way to go, Surge. <laughs> yeah, Beatrix is definitely <laughs> the, 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 the main creator of this rule. Well, actually, no, I, no, 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 nothing else comes to mind, actually. Beatrix is like the only one that actually did this. <laughs> Kefka. I mean, not Kefka, I'm um, Kuja. No. At the, at, toward the end, when he goes all trance-like and does his Ultima crap. Oh, wait, no, but Kuja actually miss- like Kuja makes you Kuja actually knocks you out though. Oh, he Beatrix, does, does he? Yeah, Beatrix just leaves yeah, you at yeah. one HP. Yes, I never did quite understand why they didn't just kill all the all the uh, good guys at that point. It's the only real problem I have with that story. Number thirty-four, Zap. Most villains in RPGs possess some form of teleportation. They generally use it to materialize in front of the adventurers when they reach the obligatory legendary relic room and seize the goodies just before you can. The question, if the bad guy can teleport anywhere at any time, then why doesn't he or she just zip in and grab the artifact and leave before the adventurers have even finished the nerve-wracking puzzle on the third floor is never answered. <laughs> Indeed. Of course, when, if we're talking about Sephiroth here, I don't... I don't. Yeah, we, wait, this is Sephiroth, isn't it? In a nutshell, but it's a lot of bad guys as well. Well, wait. Uh, oh, I'm remembering why Sephiroth did it in that story. That story had an excuse because actually you had to shrink the uh, the temple, and whoever was inside it doing the shrinking got crushed. Luckily, the um, heroes had a talking doll on their side who could be instantly replaced the moment he uh, kicked it. Number Whew. thirty-five: Heads I win, tails you lose. The graph rule. <laughs> It doesn't matter that you won the fight with the boss monster. The evil task he was trying to carry out will still get accomplished somehow. Really, you might as well have not have even followed it. <laughs> that sounded like a shitty Arnold Schwarzenegger um, impression. More than anything. Alright, I'll stop doing that now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying to make it sound like an epic reading. Yes. Um... Okay, number 36, Clockwork Universe Rule. No matter how hard you try to stop it, that comet or meteor will always hit the Earth. Unless you get uh, the four guardians in Majora's Mask, in which you can't keep it from hitting the Earth. Yes, but I'm thinking Final Fantasy VII here. Yeah. Number 37, the fake ending. There will be a sequence which pretends to be the end of the game, but obviously isn't, if for no other reason than because you're still on disc one or four. <laughs> Final, Fantasy. Final Fantasy eight. Yeah. Indeed. Number 38. You die, and we all move up in rank. 
during that fake ending, the true villain of the story will kill the guy you'd thought was the villain just to demonstrate what a badass he, the true villain, really is. You never get to kill the fake villain yourself. <laughs> God damn, that, that's true. I wanted to kill the president of Galbadia myself. He was such an asshole. Number 39. What are we going to do tonight, Binsfeld? The goal of every game, as revealed during the fake ending, is to save the world from the evil figure. Of course! <laughs> from an evil figure who's trying to take over or destroy it. There is no way to escape from this formidable task, no matter, no matter whether the protagonist's goal in life is to pay off debt, to explore distant lands, or just to make time with the cute girl in the blue dress. It will be necessary to say, for him to save the world. In order of to course! It. Take heart, though. Once the world gets sorted out, everything else will fall into place almost immediately. I did have a certain amount of respect for the Legacy of Cain, Blood Omen 1 in this regard until you found out that the, that the entire quest was about saving the world anyway. <laughs> of course! <laughs> it, was a, it was a revenge story, but then you realize you're trying to save the world from, from all the pillars being corrupted and destroyed and all that. On a, on a more satisfying note, at the end of the game, you do actually have a choice to just say, fuck the world, I'm going to take it over. And let the pillars fall. Number and forty. Yes. Number forty. <laughs> Zelda's axiom: Whenever somebody tells you about the five ancient talismans or the nine legendary crystals or whatever, you can be quite confident that saving the world will require of you to course. find every last one of them. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yes, that is true. Especially yeah. Mario RPG. That was almost blatant about what you had to go to. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, I like this one. Number forty-one. George W. Bush Geography Simplification <laughs> Initiative. <laughs> Every country in the world will have exactly one town in it, except for the country you start out in, which will have three. <laughs> Although, knowing, knowing good old Bush, he still wouldn't be able to read the map. Yeah. <laughs> that's like every Final Fantasy game that's ever had a world map in it. Number 42, and... Fodor's Guide Rule. In the course of your adventure, you will visit one desert city, one port town, one a mining town, a casino city, Sonic the Hedgehog, a magic city, usually flying, a, mag a medieval castle kingdom, one clockwork city, one martial arts based community, one thieves slum, one lost city, and one, and one sci fi utopia. On the way, you'll also get a chance to see the cave with rocks that glow from a natural energy source. The village populated with non-human characters, the peaceful village where everyone knows the latest news about the hero's <laughs> quest, see Guy and Street Rule, the snow village, the magical forest lake mountain, the shop in the middle of nowhere, the fantastic looking place with lots of FMBs just showing your entrance, the subtropical jungle island populated by friendly natives, the annoying cavern maze, and a place, any place, that was destroyed in the past disaster. That pretty much yeah. covers just about every single location in any RPG history. That, doesn't that pretty much cover 90% of of all possible ideas? That 10% being Bioshock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, more <laughs> or less. Number 43 is the Midgar Principle. The capital of the evil empire is always divided into two sections, a lower city slum filled with slaves and supporters of the rebellion, and an upper city filled with loyal fanatics and corrupt aristocrats. Oh, ain't it the truth, ain't it the truth. Beyond you know what? Evil. Even Coruscant in Star Wars is set up that way, even though it's never really explored in the movies. Number 44, not invented here. Trade of technology would not exist. One place in the world will have all the techno gadgets while all the others will be harvesting dirt. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the Midgar versus the rest of the world um, comparison right there. Number 45, law of cartographical elegance. The world map always cleanly fits into a rectangular shape with no land masses that cross the edge. Ah, uh, yeah, well, yeah. But can't we say that about our own world map, seeing as how, um, yeah, there are maps that look like that? Just a thought. Um, since, I'm Puerto, since I'm Puerto Rican, I think I'll read 46. <laughs> Number 46, Gien es mas macho, also known as the Fargo Rule. Every powerful character you attempt to seek aid from will first insist upon testing your strength in a battle to the death. Wait, 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 wait. That's retarded. 
if you fight them in a battle to the death, won't they be dead? Or That's the point. And, and then they can't help you. That's the point. That's retarded. <laughs>